All right, Hotspot continues right here once again, coming to you live on KUAM TV 8. So hello all of you on Guam who are watching TV and a special half a day to all of you around the world watching us live on YouTube or on Facebook. I'm Jason Salas and we are continuing our candidate conversation series where we give you an in-depth look, a, a rather intimate look, if you will, at the many candidates, the brave men and women and dedicated Guamanians who want to serve you as members of the 37th Guam legislature, which we will inaugurate next January, but we got the general election to get through, so we are profiling all of them for you and even featuring some of your uh, comments and questions directly to them. So if you ever have any questions that you want, put them in comments right now. We'll see if we can get to those, time permitting. And also, if you happen to see one of our reporters out in the street, just pull them aside and say, hey, I have a question for any of the candidates. We'll make sure to set you up, so thank you for that. All right, but joining me on the KUM couch today, Dwayne San Nicholas, of course, he is representing the Democrat Party of Guam and making another glorious return, <laughs> Vince Bora from the GOP. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Uh, Schedule to we also um, were expecting Angela Santos, but unfortunately, she could not make it. So, Angela, um, you know, we we uh, have not forgotten you, and we're definitely going to get you on a future episode right here of Candidate Conversations. But, uh, gentlemen, the KOM couch is uh, yours very sure. dutifully um <laughs> let me say first before we get into you know the whole introduction and everything congratulations on your finish in the primary Thank very you. very well done uh what was your experience like Dwayne? having gone through this for like the first time where, <laughs> yeah. where were you first of all oh first of all you know we, we we went around the whole island and you know that, that, was, that was so exciting for us that was the first time we did it i did it as a candidate mm -hmm. and uh, then we got home and you know we watched it all the way up to about 3 a.m i don't know how you guys do it you know, staying all the way up till morning. A lot know. of coffee. A lot of coffee. Okay, so I, you know, and then and I, I saw where I was standing. I was like probably number thirteen by three a.m. I said, you know what, just just leave it in the hands of the Lord. Go get some rest. And, there you and go. I woke up in the morning. I was like, oh my God, I made it. Okay, can can, can I ask you, doing? Does your company, Jay Goodman, do you guys bring in like air mattresses or maybe? Yes. Now, like... now, now we we branded air air mattresses. Okay. So, yeah. So we branded some mattresses. I'm gonna need uh, one of those for myself, for Nestor, for Nick Delgado, for, yeah, for for the general. Because yes. you know, as we get later and later on yeah, into the night, yeah. hopefully it's not gonna go that long this time. Yeah. But you know, we we may well, need a couple of Well, you got it. You just just let me know how many you need. Okay. You know what? Yeah. Just invoice KUM. They'll, they'll take care of it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> All right, so Vince, how did you spend your uh, your primary day? Um, I think for me it was exciting because it was a gubernatorial year. You know, mm -hmm. when I ran last time, it was just senatorial, so it was kind of dead um, throughout the polls last election. So the vibe was distinctly oh, different? Oh, definitely different. Um, you know, I, I think for me, being a Republican, and of course the, the Lou and Josh team had a bigger camp, right? And so mm -hmm. to go to that side and be, be received, uh, the reception was very nice, and I appreciate that. And so it was a little exciting, of course, to to just walk versus before where you get down it's like five ten people and then mm. you move on versus like you're actually you know there, there was a lot more people to talk to and and the democrats were very interested in, in me and my story and so I, I was appreciative of that so that oh, was different nice. this year yeah because i guess before we are political candidates at, at least the two of you yes. and your colleagues mm. you know we are still guamanians and you know we're you're all competing there were there were, of course 21 democrats 16 republicans but you know you're all neighbors most of you are probably <laughs> related at some level and everything yeah, like definitely. that so but i want to give a shout out though to talafofo they had the best um food set up uh for, no for surprise the <laughs> there what would what, you eat uh, this, I, I didn't eat, but of course I wanted to, but it was like, you know, towards the end and we were trying to make it out of the South to make it into, but just going through all the precincts, to, uh, Talapopo had like the best setup for well, the I, re I remember when my dad ran for, uh, ran for Senator, the first time he did so was 98, you know, my family and I, my, my sister, my mom and my dad, we we're trying to make it like through as many of the polling mm -hmm. precincts as we can. When you get to the South, they're like, boy, come over here and eat. Yes. It makes it really hard to like stay on schedule when you got all these wonderful yeah, people like definitely. inviting you into their homes. Yeah. So, but yeah, it was fun. It was uh, fun. So <laughs> wonderful. Okay, so now with that said, <laughs> now we got to actually talk about their platform. So, Dwayne, we'll start with you, and uh, that's your camera right there. So, if you would just address that, Which you have one, 60, that one right there. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, uh, you so have sixty seconds. Yeah. So when I first when I first decided to run, I wanted to, you know, I'm I'm a solutions focused guy. I, I love to do things in increments, you know, step by step. So I said, you know, let me go out there and uh, try try to uh, reintroduce. Um, consumer grade fireworks. I grew up in Acme, you know, the time of Acme where you mm -hmm. walk in, just buy the fireworks. And I, I, I asked my dad so many times to walk in there and you know, just buy me, go home, pop the fireworks. I had a great time. All the friends, the neighborhood, the neighbors, you know, loved it. So I, I wanted to bring back consumer grade fireworks mm. uh, for the island, you know, so they could celebrate safely. You know, we always often complain uh, about about our, our, our people shooting up 
uh, their firearms. Or making cannons making out of cannons, you know, like right, a right. And, and, Yeah, why, 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 why deal with that when you could just go go to the store? And that, that might be a new industry for us, you know? There's a lot of kids these days, Dwayne, who have no idea how fun it is and safe. Right. I mean, that's and, a, and to safe. have a sparkler. Right. And, 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 and I remember, I, 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 before I deployed, I went to, to, to Saipan mm -hmm. and walked into the store, and there it was. It's all, it's all over the place. I bought a lot and I went down to the to the uh, to the hotel and I, I popped it up. Everybody loved it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I can't see why we don't we can't have that here. Oh, very very nice. Yeah. All right, Vince, your turn. You have uh, 60 seconds to tell the community about yourself and what they may have not known for the first one. Um, so my name is Vince Borja. Um, you know, 20 years ago, I, I lost my father to drugs, and 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 20 years fast forward, 22 years now, and we're still we're still addressing the same thing, probably at a larger scale. Meth is a little cheaper. Um, but I'm here and I'm running for senator because just like most in the community, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm, I'm scared. My family is scared uh, to, to even go out into the community at night. Uh, you know, my wife and her family are educators. They're hurting. Uh, you know, uh, the economy, it's coming back, but I think that we need to be different in how we do that. And so hopefully I can bring a new perspective uh, with my experience in the military, working at the University of Guam as a business professor and, and just being a son of Guam and, and, and coming from a poor family and understanding that, you know, things can be better and, and having the opportunity to leave the island and come back and, and being able to reinvest that. And so I'm here to offer that to the people of Guam and, and hopefully uh, bring change that can prepare Guam for our children and generations to come. All right, Thank well you. done, Vince. And guys, check out Vince on Instagram. Like, first of all, really, really good pictures of him and his beautiful family, <laughs> but also his success story is inspiring. It is motivational. I mean, it, uh, Vince, Vince, you you are a true uh, someone who can show the power of the human spirit, like if ever there was one and everything. You have an amazing story. And, appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. and we really appreciate the candor with which you share it. So that, right. that's incredible. All right. Thank you. Time to get to some Q&A, gentlemen. You ready? <laughs> all right. So time, time to step up. So, Dwayne, I'd like to ask you, first of all, um, and by the way, you have uh, 60 seconds to okay. uh, respond, both of you gentlemen. Um, I want to talk about business, right? Because your company, Jay Goodman, right, um, as, as a someone who brings in products and services i know that you said you specialize in uh customer happiness yeah. in customer service right. uh you know you want to take care of your fellow guamanians but at the same time you also want to create a sustainable business and the the variety of products like you have why well, i asked you about the air mattress right yeah, yeah. you can't just hang your hat on one particular right. thing right and guam for so many years has been almost solely dependent on tourism right, right? so how do you bring that mentality and the success that you've had with jay goodman to the larger Guam macro economy. Well, you know, I, I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't wake up and I say, you know, how can I make things better for my fellow man, you know, for, 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 for people, my customers. You know, you, you walk in my store and you find solar lights and right next to it is neck pillows, you know, or <laughs> something. And, 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 it's, and it's all, it, everything that I have in my store is kind of like geared to what I think would make people happy. Mm -hmm. And so like, if I were to bring that into government, it would be improving our services. I mean, I walked into uh, to go and renew my my my, my uh, license plate, mm -hmm. and um, the the place just lit up. And why it was because I, you know I, I entered in there and people knew me and they were so happy. And if we can continue that for everybody, you know, improve the services, so they always smiling for everybody. You know, it would be nice to walk into a government office, you know. And so if I'm coming into the if, if I if I'm if I'm the boss of some place, mm -hmm. it's going to be happy, and I want to improve the. The services for our people so that when they go into you know they 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 they, they go into our offices you know they're happy to come out and when they when they when they leave they're going to be smiling and for and on from the agency's perspective i mean happy workplace you happy know, like workplace it, it, it greatly improves exactly, productivity exactly and you know i i was a customs officer for a uh, supervisor for the longest time you were and uh you know I'd, i would always tell the the management i said you know you don't you don't really have to you know pay these people just make them happy mm -hmm. you know by by giving them good leadership and and something to look forward to and and the place was happy and well uh, you know the customers came in they were always smiling they left smiling and mm -hmm. and and that's the kind of of energy i bring to 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 government mm -hmm. it's just you know if you give me the keys to run this place well, everybody's be happy. <laughs> there you go. Very well. Yeah, done. Yeah. And I got to say, Dwayne, like your audio is coming in clear right now. Yeah. Beneath that incredible beard, <laughs> okay. the microphone is still picking it up. That, that's amazing. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I, did, I, 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 I don't know. Sorry, it muffles got, out the... Uh, I've just got to... No, not at all. I'm, I've just got to think for beards and everything. Yours, yeah. is, yours is absolutely oh, okay. amazing. Thank I've said you. that many times on the yeah, show. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're watching out for us. All know. right. Okay. All right. So to Vince Boran. Vince, um, I want to kind of draw again from um, 
uh, from the inspiration you give to people, right? Um, your education and then the way you've continued to educate yourself and improve upon yourself and, you know, kind of um, add to your knowledge um, is so inspiring. How can you actually take that and not say, oh, look at me, I've got, you know, X number of degrees and everything like that, but really usher, you know, that experience and see what it's done for you, you personally and everything, and hopefully make positive change in the Department of Education? I think, I think what the people need, I mean, not everybody, but I think what I can bring is that, that personal connection that most people can relate to in the community, right? When I think of, like, I can go out there, like you said, right, I can go out there and brag about all the things I've done, my education, but people need to talk, need, people need people that can hear them, that can understand like the day-to-day -day struggles, right? When we, the other day when, when I was talking to my cousin about trying to find a new job, right? And she talked about how much she spends on food. And for me to sit there and understand, like, you know, growing up, it was like, she, even though it, it's not as bad as like, I always try to say like as bad as I had it when I was younger, where like really like we were, you know, I always say we were guaranteed one meal a day is that mm -hmm. when you, when, you know, when we were sitting and talking about like how, how can things get better? It's well, look at your current situation and look at what you're doing to make things better, right? Like we can sit all day long and complain about why things are expensive or why this and this or blame the government. But when you look at what are you doing to be able to, to afford that, right? Or what can you do to? And so I think for me, I bring that personal connection in regards to I can, I know what you're feeling and I know what, I know what it takes to get there. And hopefully I could, I could share that story and inspire others to do the same thing. So empathy being very, very key for, for not only to hopefully your political aspirations, but also just Yeah, and so when effort. I come and say that you can do this to be better, it's not because I, I think that's what you can do, but I know that that's what you need to do to be better. Mm -hmm. I, know what, I know that's what you need to do to be able to, I'm not saying you're gonna make as much money as, as I was able to make, because again, like that, that's still taking a lot of hard work and a lot of sacrifice, mm -hmm. uh, not just in my daily life, but with my and within my marriage and with the, with the kids at home. But it and those are the things that you have to do and, and fail at in order to 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 to, to, to how do I say it? to uh, to come back and, and mm -hmm. be able to to overcome a lot of the obstacles that most people most people on Guam face. And so, you know, that's really my 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 message to, to most people is that. Times are tough now, but I think at the end of the day, it can always be better. You just have to have those, you know, not handouts, but more of a, of a hand up on how, how can we facilitate or create an economy, especially I think that's important, like where the government can come in is that we create an economy where people can be engaged and contribute. Because then like you look at like drugs and you can look at a lot of other things. And if you have a strong economy, economy where, where, where people are engaged, then you have people that are going to con contribute back to society and, Very true. and, and, and they feel good about themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it definitely helps in just people in general today, a lot are very angry, right? I mean, even being out about being out in, in the, on the campaign trail, like talking to people. I don't think angry. Dwayne's angry at all. No, Dwayne's like, no, no, no Dwayne, but Dwayne, Dwayne it, resonates he's on the campaign trail. Yeah. He knows there are a lot of mad people yeah, out yeah. there. Yes, that, no, that, that's, that's very true. Um, and a lot of it has yeah. to do with. Not disagreeing with you whatsoever. Yeah, it has a lot to do with the society we live in. And we as leaders control that, whether it be the government, whether it be in businesses, like everything starts at the top. Okay. That's, 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 that's really the, how it is, right? I mean, you, 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 you know, you have an ability to change the, the culture you have an ability to change what is normal mm -hmm. if we allow as a government and as leaders to make this the norm then th this is just what we're gonna have to deal with and so well kudos to the both of you for stepping up all right i want to talk about something with both of you gentlemen that i know is near and dear to your heart with your prior military service is um the fact that you know you guys are now public figures and people probably like like Dwayne said you know you were recognized out in the community people like say oh you know i know you're running i've got some concerns will you you know Will you give me an audience? And Duane, we'll start with you. How many vets, your fellow vets, like approached you and just said, you know, as is said in the military, you know, we both spilled the same blood and the same mud and everything like that. I've got concerns about my health care, about um, things that I believe I should have and everything like that. Yeah. What were those conversations like? Well, you know, a lot of, you know, I, I've gone through the, the VA system too. And a lot of it has to do with having to go to Hawaii. And, and that's one of the main to concerns, tripler. right, to tripler or to, you know, uh, we, have a, we have a huge uh, veteran population here and uh, they always have to go to Hawaii. Uh, we always have to, you know, and when we com communicate with the VA, it's all done through, through mail. Mm -hmm. And it, get, it gets uh, tiring sometimes and frustrating for, for our vets. So if we had a, a regional office here, 
uh, if we if we ask our, our, our federal partners to consider having a, a a VA regional office here, if they can have one in the Philippines, uh, in a foreign country, then you know why why not uh, here on Guam where you know uh, the per capita for enlistment is pretty high. You know, I believe we still have the world's yeah, the world's highest yeah, and, and, highest you know, concentration of young very, men and women. Very that patriotic, you know, yeah. and and it's and it's not that we're you know, we want to push that on them is that, you know, I, I, it would be nice if they recognize that and they say, you know, those those Guam people down there, they're so patriotic, they joined the military and let's go out there and let's let's help them and, mm -hmm. and bring a regional office so that when somebody does apply for 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 VA compensation, it's there and, and they can be walked through. You know, a lot of the, the frustration that the veterans have is actually communicating with the VA, you know, and uh, if we had a re regional office here, uh, I think that would alleviate some uh, uh, most of the problem. So again, going back to your your steadfast belief in customer service being you know customer service, yeah, you know, you bring go. that here and and let's take care of our veterans. You know, and it, it's only it's only commensurate and and good because of of, of our our our. Um, patriotism. There you go. Very well said. Thank you. Jim. All right, Vince, and you know, also as a fellow vet, right? I'm sure other veterans, probably many um, significantly older than you, they're, they're like, you know, okay, Vince, I know you're running for public office and everything. These are my concerns. I need you to help me out. Um, you know, we're, we're both, you know, we both wore the uniform. We both went through training. We both made the sacrifices. We both got scars, probably visible and invisible and everything. What were those conversations for you? And did, did they ask you for specific solutions? Yeah, so, you know, I, I, sh I share the same sentiments with, uh, with, with um, Dwayne. Dwayne. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Santa Claus I'm, works I'm thinking, I'm thinking of my thoughts. <laughs> my thoughts works are. Well. But, you know, the, the, what, what, I, what I share and, and where, where I look at the, the problem as a whole is, one, um, sh we, do we need to do something locally to facilitate that process with them getting benefits with the VA? Yes. And I know that there are, are a lot of nonprofits out there and, and they have the as an office. But I think when you look at, because the VA, if you can't get to Hawaii soon, sooner or as fast as you want, there is a way for you to see somebody locally, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the problem is that just healthcare as in general here on Guam, uh, we, need, we, we need better access for our community as a whole. So for me, it's like, how can we improve that? So that not just, yes, veterans, uh, because you can get a referral to see somebody locally if you can't uh, get an appointment uh, within, I think, 30 days, right? Uh, and so when we look at improving healthcare for in the community, we can we can improve uh, access for veterans as well. Uh, but in the short, you know, in, in the in the in the in the short time right now, what we can do is, you know, they they really like he said communication. They just because a lot of veterans give up when they they submit their application and they don't hear or see anything. Uh, in regards to their claim and just, and just like yeah. anybody right when you're crying for help and you don't nobody's listening then you give up right and that's where suicide comes in and all these other mental health issues that come in and more so than most these are these are men and women who have earned and deserve you know those privileges and those rights those definitely benefits. so we need to first address getting them the benefits because they can't get the local the referral to see somebody locally uh, without uh, getting their benefits period and then we need to look at how can we one improve healthcare access for people on Guam period because if we improve it for Guam we improve it for them as well yeah. um, and I think that that's very that's may, that's may a that's a bit there. yeah please we got we got about 20 seconds you know, though, so you got to go quick uh, uh, yeah so so camp blocks I mean they're building huge buildings in there I'm pretty sure they could put a little room in there for a nice little regional office. Mm -hmm. You know, I passed by there and I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm sure they would have no problem with no that too. No problem with that. Know, yeah. And with no. the Marines here, exactly. you know, it's, it's going to be a great win-win for everybody. All right, gentlemen, great, great ideas, great thoughts. Um, we are going to take a quick commercial break right now, but please stay tuned because when we come back, we are featuring your community questions for both Dwayne St. Nicholas and Vince Borja, representing the Democrat Party of Guam and the GOP respectively. And we go to our lightning round. See some, maybe some of the lighter side of both Dwayne and Vince. Get their thoughts on that when we return right here on the Hotline. All right, welcome back to Com Candidate Conversations right here on the Hotspot. Once again, Vince Borja joins us and Dwayne St. Nicholas. I must say, gentlemen, we have, I don't think in the history of this show in the Hotspot, in what, the five plus months that we've been doing it, we have never had guests on the KUM couch whose facial hair game was as stellar as, as the two of you. I mean, Dwayne, you know, the, the, beard, the beard almost literally speaks for itself. You know, you've got artificial intelligence in that beard. But Vince, you got pretty good five o'clock shadow going there, man. Yeah, I maintain it. 
But you know what's interesting though? I, when I was younger in high school, I bleached it. So like, I don't know if you noticed, like there's like a, it's kind of weird because I could shave it off. Yeah, there's like a patch that just keeps coming out blonde. Like, nice. Yeah, it's kind of weird. For years, I or could my never... mom's not telling me yeah, anything, yeah, geez, right? Like, well, because I, I graduated from high school in <laughs> Sorry, 1992, mom. so like I always tried to you know get like the whole like the grunge thing, but it would never connect. So like you know, I'm just you know, I'm I'm just pathetic little me. So. <laughs> but tell you what, Guamanians who are way more talented than I uh, sent us some questions, and we have some video questions, gentlemen. We're gonna show them on the screen, then I'll okay. read it to you. And our first question comes from Mr. Rodney Titano, who operates his dad's Efit carving shop. Downtown in Hagatni, the Chamorro Village. So, uh, Rodney, here is his question. My name is Rodney Titano. Um, I run the Ethan shop for my dad, the master carver, Robert uh, P. Titano. And um, I'm returning from Guam after a 10 year sentence in the feds. I want to know even if I can't vote, I do have a big influence on people and, and their ideas about. Um, our legislature, and I want to know which candidates are going to do something for uh, ex felons like me and help us get uh, reacquainted in this society. All right, and we wish to thank Rodney for that very excellent question. So, Dwayne, we'll start with you. And, and Rodney, of course, said, I'll reiterate it now. Um, he said, having just completed a federal sentence stateside and now returning to, um, to his island soil, uh, he asks, What plans? For your ex-felons who are trying to get reacquainted for society, do you have so rehabilitation, re readjustment? Well, you know, uh, a lot of the the stuff that I I, I think the rehabilitation should happen also while, while they're incarcerated, but as they come out, you know, we need to re we need to educate not only them but also our public to give them a chance. You know, I I'm, I'm a Santa Claus, so I'm always you know I'm, I'm forgiving. You know, I'll give you a second chance, a third chance, maybe a fourth chance. You know. Who's been and naughty and who's been nice? Who's literally. been naughty and nice? And you know, there there are really great people who've who've recovered, who've come out of uh, incarceration and and literally trying to change their lives. It's just having a difficult time trying to find a job. So that's where we we might be able to to try to find a way, a balance where you know it's both beneficial to the the the, the, the parolee or mm -hmm. and, uh, and and for 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 the. Uh, for the business person or, mm -hmm. or whoever is going to hire, I, I I believe in second chances. Mm -hmm. I do, I do a lot, and uh, um, I, I I think that was a wonderful question, and it's something that we need to revisit and and work on smartly mm -hmm. so that it benefits the community and and, and the newly released uh, person. And I'm sure because you own like you know a family-owned business, a yes. small business, and everything, if a uh, ex-convict was to approach you and said, you know, I've been through the system, you know, I'm, I'm trying to re-assimilate re into society, you know, would you consider me for employment, you know? Provided he's honest and he's kind. <laughs> there you go. And you know, you, you, you can, you know, people, people grow, people mm -hmm. come out of, uh, out of tough times, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's nice to, to be able to, to give them a chance and then they can grow and be, a, be, a, be an asset to our community. Absolutely, yeah. very well said. Okay, over to Vince Borja now. Vince, with that, that topic again, you know, your own story of struggle and, and rising above. I mean, you literally beat the odds and I would say that's not too dissimilar from what uh, people in this situation, you know, having been incarcerated and now getting back into society now face. So what solutions have you? I, I think, you know, and, and it's, I'm not gonna lie, I have, I have people in my immediate family that are close to me that have, have gone through this, right? Mm -hmm. And have been through rehabil uh, rehabilitative programs locally. And I've seen some kind of success, but I think that the one thing we need to work on is really the follow-up, right? Like um, a lot of the support that this family member gets is is from a faith-based group, right? Which has done a decent job with following up with, with this family member. Um, and definitely, you know, I think if it wasn't for that, uh, if there was like a, uh, they're called a transitional home or a transitional, you know, residence for people who come out. Because the problem that we have is that there, it seems like there's so many people on it that they end up, if they don't have that support group or that, that support system, they end up socializing with the same people that they mess with before they went back in that got them into trouble mm -hmm. right um so definitely you know the the current program uh, a better follow-up uh pr process or, or system and we definitely need to look at like maybe a public private partnership because we don't want to put that responsibility into so, entire responsibility on the government i mean thankful for us and my family that the faith-based group um has done a great job actually with with following up with this family member and 
so far is doing well. Um, but we definitely need to look at as a community or as a government, not take on that full responsibility, but how can we work with the community to provide that support for every single person that comes out, whether they go through through the rehabilitation program or just you know get locked up for a short short for a short time, mm -hmm. uh, because it really is that relapse and that 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 point when they get out that it's critical. Like, what are we, you know, like. Sorry, I'm going to go over a little bit, but like I, I remember somebody else who had like a third party and then like just the way the, 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 the court system managed that, like there's just so many loopholes for that to fall through the crack. Like mm -hmm. why appoint a third party when you're not holding them responsible? I get it. They're adults, but that's usually the point in trying to, to implement that so that they don't go back to that. All right. Good, good um, thoughts by both of you. So, you know, second chances, holding people accountable, mm -hmm. a very, very sound solutions. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next question, gentlemen, comes to us from George Alvarez. Hi, my name is George Alvarez. I'm a resident of Guam. And my question for the senatorial candidates is, what are you going to do about the ice problem on Guam? All right, thank you to uh, George there. And I, I think, I, I don't want to like be absolutely sure, but I think I know, I, I, I know that, uh, that corner like anywhere. I think that was in Kings. <laughs> yeah, right? I, th I, think, I think I know those, those, those very, chairs. very comfortable, um, those yeah, very, uh, booth chairs. yeah, the booths. I've been there a million times, all right. Uh, but that being, that being obviously um, like a very light issue, what George was talking about, and his question, we'll start with you, Dwayne, obviously very, very serious and very, very prevalent. Serious, yes. What will you, if elected senator, do about the ICE problem that we all face on Guam? You know, um, like I said, you know, I, I've said it before, I'm, 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 a, I'm built American, you know, I have a Singaporean mind and a Jewish soul. And so all of these are trying to figure out how, how to, to uh, save the, 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 the island from meth. And we can look at fine examples of how they deal with it in Singapore. We just saw how Duterte dealt with it. But, you know, both of those are two. They're very extreme and kind of heavy handed, he heavy, heavy handed. And, uh, you know, we're an island of family. And I told this to many people before, you know, we love each other, even even as much as you, you you've done me wrong. You know, we're still family. So mm -hmm. I'm always going to try to help you fix yourself. And so, you know, when when you're dealing with when when i'm thinking about the legality of, of dealing with meth what you don't want to do is uh, uh you know with the constitution you, you don't want to uh uh, 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 impin uh infringe on somebody's civil rights mm -hmm. so it's very critical that we look at this and we uh, and we attack this very smartly i was a customs officer for tw for 23 years i've seen the effects i've seen the drugs you know people hiding it in in um in teddy bears you know and, and it's horrible so the only reason why i found it is because i knew the village that it was going to go to i said you know i don't think there's anybody who deserved a teddy bear in that village <laughs> so I, I ended up pulling that uh, that teddy bear and finding drugs in it but if we are going to approach something we have to approach it smartly and we have to do it in a manner in which we don't we don't trample over somebody's civil rights because that's where government will get in trouble. We want to do it right and we want to do it fair and we want to do it in a way where, where you know, we, we, we don't, we don't um, trample over somebody's civil rights. And it's very difficult because, okay. you know, the, constitu the Constitution makes it hard to deal with, with meth. Yeah, very, very true. All right, yeah. Vince, let's, let's go to you. So, you know, um, when, when I first found out my dad was on meth and I was like, I think, sixth or seventh grade, uh, one, I was shocked because, of course, he was. I knew he wasn't on it just because of the way things changed suddenly. But when I asked him, and it was crazy because we were coming home from somewhere, um, and I just asked him why he did drugs, and he said it was because it made all his problems go away, right? And the reason why I share that is because when I look at the drug problem as a whole on Guam today, a lot of it, a lot of them, especially people close to me, uh, friends, family, and their friends and family and why they're on it, it comes down to one major issue, and that's mental health. Right. Times are tough on Guam and for them, it brings them to a different state. And so I think the bigger issue that we need to address is mental health. We need to obviously, one, build a stronger economy so that a lot, a lot of our problems is, is revolved about, around money these days. It's very expensive to live on Guam. Right. And then, of course, finance, financial issues roll into, you know, relationship issues that roll into educational issues that roll into child neglect. And you look at what, how does that all start? Right. And it's how do I manage the stress and how do I manage the problems? And I'm not saying we need to hire a hundred, a hundred, um, you know, therapists to, mm -hmm. to fix that problem. But 
why are people stressed, right? It's the economy and what, what, you know, you go, then you can get into education. There are different things, but really, again, it circles back to what I said previously about really, we just need to build, build a stronger economy and, and people will be more engaged. And then we want stronger economy, more money for the government, better resources, businesses are doing well they're gonna you know they're gonna partner with the government to, to mm -hmm. fix all of these they're invested just like the government is right they're invested just like we are and so we need to address mental health we need to address medical because that's another thing right i mean i can get into family members who really just lived you know day by day or sick that are just every day trying to survive it's not about how am i going to get better it's how am i going to make it to the next day which is pretty sad because most of the people that have died in my family close to us in the last couple of years they, you know, diagnosed with cancer or whatever, but it was never like, here's your long-term healthcare plan, mm -hmm. right? And that puts a strain on families. And and I know a couple of people who turn to drugs because of course their auntie or their mom or their dad is dying. Right. And it, again, it just puts them at a different state. And I think that that's important. And that's mm -hmm. how we address the meth issue. And certainly a problem that, that faces each and every one of us as Guamanians, both directly and indirectly. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you know, with, with the meth, there, there's not just one approach. Mm -hmm. You right. have to deal with it in the importation side. You have to deal with it as a, as a mental issue side. You have to deal with it with the with the courts. I mean, it's and you, just, you know you know probably know, better than anybody yeah, being know, in customs yeah. 23 years. Yes, sir. And, right. and, and and you know, it, it, you just there's it, just not one silver bullet for it. I'll know? tell you what, that that was a really really heavy topic. Obviously, yeah. um, some very strong <laughs> very strong um, solutions. Hopefully. Uh, yes. Both Dwayne and Vince will be able to bring those to fruition. But we are going to take one break right now. And we are going to get to the lighter <laughs> side of Let's politics. Help. We are going to do our fast five rapid series Four. of questions <laughs> right on the flip side of this break. So stay tuned. Good things coming up. You know, you All right. We are back in candidate conversations and we saved, depending on your perspective, the best for last because we're going to ask Dwayne St. Nicholas and Vince <laughs> Bora some aspects of their personality, maybe some of the things they like to do when they're not running for public office. I know, you know, you, you guys work on this 25 hours a day. So, you know, but I would like to know, and we'll start with Dwayne and we'll go like, um, you know, in order on the KUM couch. Okay. First question, Dwayne, what was the last movie or TV series that you binge watched? Uh, Glitch with my wife just last night. We finished it. Glitch. Glitch. Yeah. The one Good where one. they come back from, you know, yeah, I got a lot of, I lost a lot of family members and I want them to come back to life, but if they're going to cause us any trouble, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just messing around. But it was glitch. A oh, very good one. How yeah. about you? Last TV or movie series? Um, it was the. Uh, it's the crime scene. Was it 24? Uh, oh, 24 uh, with oh, Kiefer yeah. Sutherland. Yeah, I like to. I really like to good. Watch those. Yeah. And re real time too. Mm -hmm. Those those yeah. were crazy. All right. Uh, question number two. Dwayne, of course, you are a very emotional guy. What was the last movie that made you cry? By the way, everybody, Dwayne's wife is like off off camera there, so she's uh, probably going to hold him to this. Yeah, it was Midway. Oh, no, no, uh, not Midway, the, the Greyhound. You know, the Greyhound, the one with uh, Tom Hanks. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. the one where he lost, he, he lost, uh, he lost his, uh, his chef or, or his waiter. Yeah. I mean, yeah his, Ooh, yeah, yeah that'll get that, you. That, 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 just, that just tore me up, yeah. Because, you oh, know, he, the, the, the commander would, would pray and the waiter mm -hmm. would bow his head down as well. Okay. And, you know, that just ripped me up when we lost him. Yeah, he's not, he's not only a tough guy, ladies and gentlemen, he's also very, very sensitive. Yeah, so, very. <laughs> all right. I don't usually cry, but I cry a lot lately because my wife cries. And, like, usually I'm just sitting there and I feel, you know, she's my wife, and I feel bad because she's crying. I'll be sitting in the living room doing something on the computer, and I look at her, she's crying at a movie. And I'm like, why are you crying? Cry I'm crying because you're crying. She's like, why are you crying? Why, why are you crying? Like, it's emotional. Like, it's very crazy. Like, somebody just died. So, like, you're, so you, obviously, you're the husband in your relationship, and yet you cry if your wife cries. I think you just earned yourself about really 2,500 did. female votes for that one. <laughs> She I really, like Vince. He's sensitive. She really gets into the crying. Like, sir, I initially think like she's crying because like somebody just died. Maybe she, you know, because she'll try to multitask on the phone and she's wow. just like, and I'm like, why are you crying? Last movie <laughs> I ever cried at, Cool Runnings, the one about the Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah. Everybody laughs at me, but I said, you know, that that final scene when they yes. pick it up and they're, they're like, no, we have to finish the race. This and you know, being from a small island, knowing how yeah. we're judged, and yeah. you know, maybe like people look down their noses at, but you know, it was still when you're in that moment. You got to represent your community, yeah, man. That's right. Island Pride. Yeah. That's what it's all about. All right, Dwayne, you of course play Santa Claus, but who, Dwayne, is your role model? Uh, it would have to be my dad and my my godfather, Ricky Berdalio. Yeah, I mean, they, those those two had a. I mean, I, I have so many, you know, so many. My uh, father Gus. I know, didn't know that Ricky was your Nino. Yeah, Ricky. Yeah. Uh, fa father Gordon Combs. You know, though, these were and my uncle Ed, who had the, the patient. was the most patient man in the whole wide world. These are these are my role models. I just can't have one. So very very strong men that have very, a very definite positive man. impact yes, on your yes, life. Yes. Well, thank you for that. All right, Vince, your role model. Um, I, 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 Dr. Annette Santos, actually, you know, when I the recently recently retired recent, dean. recently retired dean. Uh, you know, we we 
when, at least when, when we talk about our lives and what we're trying to do um, in regards to giving back to the community, we kind of share the same story and we share the same passion. Like for her, first generation, you know, a professional. Uh, me, first generation, a lot of things. And so it's, we always talk about how can we go and, and, and do, you know, re replicate more of us in the community. And so uh, definitely always look up to her. Uh, I, can, I can definitely talk to her a lot about just some of the things that I want to do and, and, and how she can, you know, she can be a part of that. And she does the same thing well, too. Well, she was sitting exactly where you're <laughs> sitting about a week ago today. Mm -hmm. And we had her here talking about her, like her, uh, her retirement and everything. And she started crying when you, she was here. And now that I know that you cry when women <laughs> cry, you would have cried right alongside with Dean Santos. No, so. but she definitely, you know, and, and she started that whole, like, she wants to do not hard work, but hard to work, right? Like things, exactly. things from her heart. And I'll never forget the day she said that and, and just, Every time we meet, like we try to have lunch every once a month uh, and to, to kind of just go over where we're at, what Very we're nice. trying to do and how we can do things to, to help uh, people like us that came from the same the same background. All right. Well, that's a, that's a good role model to have. All right. Real quick. Uh, two more guys. Dwayne, what is your favorite hobby? Hobby? Uh, I love to garden. Yeah, nice. I, 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 love, I love to plant That's sunflowers. a big green thumb. Yeah. Yep. That, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love to garden. That's one of my favorite things to do. And especially when I'm gardening with my wife or my kids best thing in the whole wide world all right how about you Vince your favorite hobby I like to run I like to work out I swim I run I bike sometimes um, other than that it's doing you know not busy work but I'm in school as well so uh, aside from all the other things that make my life full um, I like to work out I like to run all right well hopefully running for public office will be as beneficial to you as, as <laughs> yeah, running. so when running I lose I'm gonna keep running there, yeah, gonna, yeah, there you go running. all right final question NFL season kicks off tomorrow. Of course, we have the season opener here on KUM TV 8. It's the Bills and the Rams. But, Dwayne, who is your favorite football team, either uh, college or pro? Yeah, okay. You know, ever since I was a kid, it was 49ers. Yeah, All right, okay. It, it was the Niners. You, know? you are Dave, you've got Dave Delgado's vote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the Niners. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, S Steve Young or Joe Montana? You have to Montana. One. Montana, yeah, me too. Montana, yeah. All right, Vince? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a uh, Dallas Cowboys fan. Like hardcore, Ooh. very hardcore. Good Where, thing you guys are sitting far bad. apart. <laughs> good or bad, you know, I try to I try. Those to were be, good games in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's okay, it. who's your favorite cowboy of all time? Uh, Tony Romo. Tony Romo, yeah. okay, very nice. Yeah, definitely. I was, I, was pin, I was penning you for a, a Roger Staubach guy, but Romo, Romo's good too. Yeah, Romo's good. All right. So that is Vince Borja. That is Dwayne Sinicholas, and they are candidates running for the 37th Guam Legislature. We hope you enjoyed it. Gentlemen, I really, really have enjoyed having you back here again, and we wish the both of you continued success as we head into the November 8th uh, general election. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Guam. Thank you, Guam, and thank you for watching. We will see you next time.